Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we'll be unboxing and uh, doing a full review of the EVGA X17 gaming mouse. Now, this is the wired version of the mouse. This is not the wireless version. So uh, this one is with the wire, as you can see there. And uh, this mouse costs around 26 to uh, $30 on Newegg's website. Now, this has been varying very drastically uh, depending on uh, where you look in price because uh, this mouse was selling like hotcakes on Newegg's website for a very long time. And it's still, as of, th as of now, as of this video, it's about around 27 to 30-ish, depending on the seller. Um, and uh, it has been selling really well. I think, I may be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I think this is the fastest selling mouse in Newegg's history, but I could be wrong. Uh, but uh, for the features that this mouse brings, that price is just a steal. If you, you, if, just 27 bucks uh, you can get a really amazing mouse and the reviews uh, they're mostly positive there are a few negatives about this mouse uh, and we'll go into that as well but um, they're mostly positive and it's just a steal at 27 dollars you're getting a mouse with all this uh, with extra sensors and stuff a uh, bunch of keys weights you would never get a customizable weight mouse for below 40 dollars all mouse all mice um with customizable weights are easy about easily about forty to fifty dollars back in the day, but now you can get this thing for about uh, twenty seven dollars. The retail price was around forty to fifty dollars, but uh, since it's selling so well, uh, they have uh, heavily discounted it. <clears throat> so in this video, we'll be uh, unboxing this and uh, reviewing this uh, in detail. Uh, the video, uh, as you can see down in the slider below, is segmented into two sections: uh, the unboxing and the review section. As well so if you just want to jump to the review you can go ahead and jump to the review uh, but if you want to stay for the unboxing uh, go ahead um, in a future video I'll also be comparing it to the king of gaming mice which is the Logitech G502 uh, it is the golden standard for gaming mice whether you agree or not that is a widely agreed uh, standard for gaming mice the Logitech G502 uh, it is the golden standard for gaming mice and um, we'll be comparing it to the G502 in an upcoming video so until then uh, We'll uh, go ahead and unbox this thing and jump into the review. So as usual, before jumping right in, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord and Twitter. And you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. And now let's jump right into this unboxing. All right, so firstly, let's have a quick go around of the box itself. So uh, up front, we have the uh, a picture of the mouse, as you can see there, and it says uh, EVGA uh, up here and X17 uh, FPS gaming mouse. Now I also did a full review, uh, an unboxing and full review of the keyboard counterpart to this thing, uh, the EVGA Z20 uh, gaming keyboard. I have done the video up here if you wanna go ahead and watch that as well. Uh, that is the gaming counterpart, uh, the, the keyboard counterpart to the X17, which is the uh, Z20 uh, gaming keyboard. Um, that thing uh, is the uh, the one I got there is the one with the uh, linear switches not the clicky switches the linear switches um, So if you are interested in that you can go ahead and watch that I'll also link it down in the description below So up front like I said EVGA branding here uh, the picture of the mouse uh, x17 FPS gaming mouse on This side of the box it says EVGA over there as you can see there it says EVGA Moving on to the other side of the box again, it says EVGA over there, as you can see. Uh, top of the box, nothing. We just have the warranty seals, the not the warranty, the factory seals and stuff. Uh, at the bottom, we have the serial number over here. I've covered it up and uh, some EVGA information. At the back of the box, as you can see, uh, you can pause the video and read if you want to. Uh, there's some information there. We have uh, 8K Hertz, uh, high-speed USB, sniper button, triple sensor system. This thing does have three sensors, so we'll test that out and see how it goes. And uh, some other stuff as well. You can pause that and read it. And now let's jump right into the unboxing itself. So uh, let me grab a knife here and we can go ahead and uh, break the seal. I think, I may be wrong, but Newegg I think has run out of these things. 
and uh, a lot of their third party sellers are the ones that are left selling this because uh, it came from a non new egg source like although i bought it on new egg it came from not new egg i i could tell that it wasn't new egg who shipped it uh, it was shipped by a single seller so uh, i guess they're using their uh, third party sellers for that okay got that open it was a bit hard to get open because i'm standing at a weird angle here so uh it's a bit hard to cut and stuff so uh as usual even with the uh, gaming with the game the gaming keyboard uh the uh, box had a if you watch that video that i showed you earlier if you watch that uh you'll see that that also had these pull tabs for the uh keyboard itself let's rotate it and pull it out okay so up front we are greeted with the mouse itself as you can see there mouse itself and uh, a bunch of stuff fell out as well the wire and the uh, instruction manual let me put that over here so you have the evga uh, instruction manual um, it's how to set up the mouse and it has warranty information and everything else you need to know about the mouse i'm not going to read that it's pretty simple stuff and we have the mouse itself here this box comes apart like that take this off and we're greeted with the mouse so leave that to a side here we have the weights there's nothing else in the box so we can get rid of this so we'll leave the mouse over there for now we have the customizable weights oops i almost hit the camera well i did hit the camera so let me get readjusted here so we have the weight um evga branded weights as you can see there Let's open them up. They're a bit, so the box is a bit tough. Or is it because I'm using gloves? I don't know, there we go. So those are the weights. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, five of five gram weights. As you can see there, five, five gram weight. Pretty nice as well. They're shiny and uh, really reflective. And uh, let's get one out, bring it for a close up here. So that is one of the weights. Really nice, really high quality uh, precision uh, precision cut uh, metal weight. So that's nice. The box is a bit tight, but that's okay. So let's leave that to a side. And now we have the mouse itself here, as you can see here. Uh, at the bottom, we have this uh, piece of uh, tape. Let's pull it off. And uh, we are greeted uh, with the bottom of the mouse. We'll get back to theirs first. Uh, but first we have the uh, top of the mouse, uh, as you can see here, really a uh, sleek looking thing. It has, uh, it's bigger than I thought. A lot of reviews were saying this thing was actually small, but it's actually bigger than I thought. Um, so we have some buttons up here. We have the, obviously the uh, right click, left click. We have the scroll wheel with the click as well. We have one button here, one down here, the P, D. These are obviously profile switches and stuff like that. Uh, in the review, I'll exactly mention what exactly all these buttons are but for now uh, these are just uh, buttons as you can see there we have the sniper switch over here really big really easy to access uh, let me bring it up for a close-up here so sniper sniper button here really big really easy to access uh, evga branding over here more buttons for your melee and uh, probably something else you want to map it to uh, definitely i'm pretty sure that's your dpi level um, to show which dpi you're on but it could be anything else like I'll, i said i'll mention all of that in the uh in the uh, review portion of this video we're just having a quick go around of this at the bottom of the mouse as you can see the three sensor system uh, the main sensor and two other sensors that's the system they mentioned so uh, that is something that we definitely have to look forward to and then if you open it from here we have a weight way the, the place to put the weights as you can see here uh, so you can go ahead and put some weights let's actually put one or two in let's get this out first so yeah this box is a bit bit tough to open it may be because i'm wearing gloves but uh yeah this box is a bit annoying to open at times yeah that is really tight so that's one uh one slight annoyance but it's no big deal so uh we have one weight in let's grab another one probably go for 15 grams here so um we'll put three of them like that so 
and this magnetically attaches back on there as you can see the magnets are also very strong so you don't have to worry about them falling off let me bring them again for a close-up so really tough magnets so that's nice to see so what else do we have oh the braided cable so this is the length of the cable i forgot uh exactly how how long it is but here's the length this is the braided cable we have a strap a built-in strap as well to uh, wrap the cable up if you don't want the entire length let's extend it bring it up for a close-up of the braids so the keyboard the z20 had a very very fine braid that you could almost think it's rubber but it was actually braided but this on the other hand is a standard braid it's not really rough or anything it's actually really smooth uh you know what let's get rid of this uh, so I can actually feel what it feels like. So yeah, it is smooth, but it's not as smooth as the one that was on the Z20. So uh, that is that. So that is the uh, the USB portion. It says EVGA, it has the EVGA logo over there as well. So that is the mouse itself. Just a quick go around of the mouse. And now let's go into the full review uh, of the mouse, starting off with uh, basically the software that this thing runs on, on uh, Windows 10 or Windows, whatever Windows you use. I'll just show you the software and then we'll go from there. All right, so we are here with the review portion of the EVGA uh, X17 gaming mouse. Now, uh, firstly, we're gonna start off with the EVGA Unleash RGB software, the software that is needed to control this mouse, uh, change the lighting, change the DPI, etc., etc. This is uh, what the logo looks like. It says uh, EVGA Unleash RGB. It's a uh, purple color logo there. Let's click it and uh, this is the software itself, as you can see here. Let me bring the uh, camera a bit closer, center it there. So that is the front of the software. We have your uh, device switcher up here. So you can switch to the keyboard as well, the Z20 that I uh, reviewed uh, just a few weeks ago, the EVGA Z20 review, if you already haven't watched it. Uh, I, I put it up earlier as well, and I'll put it in a link down in the description below as well. So you can switch between that here. Here's a picture of the mouse. Uh, on general settings here, we have a sleep mode where it basically puts the mouse to sleep, turns off the lights. Uh, we have angle snapping, angle tune, and report rate as well. Uh, the report rate, just go ahead and set it to 8,000 hertz. It's more efficient and it's more accurate in that way. So you set it to 8,000 hertz. Sometimes, uh, you'll get this message. Here you go. So increasing the polling rate above a thousand hertz may lead to compatibility issues, blah, 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 with different games. That does not happen. Uh, so I said that with the uh, with the uh, Z, Z20 keyboard as well, because this thing has a report rate of uh, 4,000, but you can go ahead and set it uh, straight up to 4,000 on the Z20 or 8,000 on the X17, it is not gonna affect any game negatively. It can only affect the game positively and help you uh, uh, whatever, help you in whatever way you need your mouse to be uh, more accurate in whichever situation. So uh, set the report rate to 8,000. We have angle snapping, sleep mode, etc., etc. We also have our profiles over here. So uh, we can switch these with the uh, profile switcher button. So uh, on the mouse, you can uh, select the profile you want and these profiles are saved on the mouse itself so the mouse has an internal memory so you can save it uh, on the mouse itself so if you decide to switch between computers uh, switch the mouse mouse to a laptop or something the profiles will be saved within the mouse itself so that is nice to know as well we have our dpi switcher over here and this thing can go up to 16,000 dpi i don't know why you'd need 16,000. it's extremely sensitive um but it is what it is. You have your sniper button uh, DPI selection over here and we have uh, five stages. As you can see, it's pretty nice to have five stages. A lot of mice have four stages, but this one has five stages as you can see here. We have a sniper button stage as well. We have sensitivity stages. Uh, five is the maximum as well. You can reduce the stages to uh, whatever you want. Five is the maximum. We have stage two, enable X and Y over there as well. Uh, moving on to uh, LOD calibration, the uh, liftoff distance calibration for the uh, liftoff distance sensor. You can uh, 
calibrate the uh, surfaces and stuff over here. So we have a bunch of surface selections as well. You can uh, choose whichever you want and you can calibrate the mouse from there by hitting apply after moving it into whichever position you want. Uh, moving over here, we have lighting effects. So we have three lighting zones. We have the two uh, up front ones uh, facing forwards. We have a bunch of profiles and stuff uh, that you'd like, the color uh, and we have uh, static on and the, basically the types of uh, lighting you want. We have the colors here, we have profiles, blah, 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 start and stop. Uh, we have the scroll wheel light here, again, same thing. And we also have the uh, logo light as well. So you can select whatever you want. Those are the profiles or the, the patterns you wish to choose. You can choose between those. Uh, moving on to key assignments, so you can uh, change the key assignments uh, within uh, Windows over here. So you can change whatever each key does. And finally, over here, we have our macro editor as well. And uh, you can use that to set up whatever you like. Something I must point out as well, uh, as you can see, the brightness is set to 100 here. Uh, but these, the lights on the mouse are extremely bright. They're unholy bright. As you can see, I've just made it to 12. And this is basically what 12 is. That is mostly standard on most mice. But look what happens if I increase it to 100 and apply. Look how bright this gets. It is extremely bright to a point where it actually sets glare on the camera. So yeah, uh, let's actually change the color there. Let's do a red or a pink and we'll keep the brightness up there. Let me show you again very very bright so yeah the colors uh the the lights on this mice are extremely bright all three ones ex especially though the one at the back for some reason it's a bit more bright i feel like but i'm pretty sure they're all the same so yeah just keep that in mind that uh setting the brightness to 100 is not the best idea setting it to about 12 to 15 is probably the best because uh, they are extremely bright leds now, another thing about this software, you may have seen in some of the reviews, the older reviews on Newegg, and I also mentioned it in my Z20 video. A lot of people said earlier versions of this software tend to crash and like it was a really buggy, crappy software, but that is completely gone. That is no longer the case. The software works flawlessly. Uh, I have never experienced a crash and it works just uh, seemingly between the uh, Z20 and the X17. I've never had a crash or anything. So probably by the time I downloaded this, uh, uh, when I got the Z20, uh, it probably was already patched after EVGA saw the reviews and stuff. So the software, if you're wondering, is no longer an issue. The software uh, works just fine. Just like Logitech's uh, gaming software, this works just fine and uh, it is very stable as well. All right, so now that we got the uh, software out of the way, we can do a in detail go around of the mouse, uh, all the buttons, the sensors, the feel, the looks, everything. Uh, let's do it in uh, this category. So let's do buttons first, then we'll do feel and ease of use, then we'll do looks and then accuracy as well. Um, so uh, let's start off with the buttons. Now uh, up top we have obviously our uh, right click and we have our left click as well. This EVJ logo is not a button. We also have the scroll wheel. Let me bring the scroll wheel closer for a quick uh, roll test so you can hear it rolling. So it's on the more rougher side. It's not a smooth scroll wheel at all. It's more towards the rougher side, but I don't really use it too much. So it doesn't really bother me, but still, uh, just so you know, uh, if you're picky about your scroll wheel, as you heard it over there, that is more towards the rougher side. Also quickly, I like to apologize. My fingers all cut up and scratched. That's cause it's freezing outside and it's really dry. So my fingers start to crack. So I apologize for that. Uh, but anyway, the, the scroll wheel, as you heard, it's more towards the rougher side. Uh, the clicking, so we have some, uh, we have uh, left click and right click as well for the scroll wheel buttons. Uh, up top here, we have P, which is the profile switcher. So P for the uh, profile switcher, as you can see there. Uh, that is the uh, P profile switcher and then down here we have the D for DPI switcher That's your DPI switcher now the profiles I mentioned earlier Those were the ones in the software on the on the right side there the DPI switch is to switch of course your pre-selected DPI 
Moving on to the side here, we have a huge sniper switch, easily the uh, most accessible sniper switch I've seen on any uh, gaming mouse. It's so easy just to flick it like that if you really want to uh, drop the DPI down to a really low rate so you can aim easily easily the best accessible sniper switch i've seen you have your fingers on these two buttons always but then if you really need to click the sni sniper switch just lift it up a bit and click it like that you don't have to press it you just flick it like that so that's a really really nice sniper switch easily right off the bat i can say the best sniper switch on any mouse that i've used up to now it's gotten a, it's taken a while to get used to it since i moved from the logitech g502 special edition um but hey, this is a really good sniper switch. Took a while to get used to, but it is what it is. I really, really like it. And again, I said the EVJ logo is not a button. Uh, moving on to these two switches, you have your uh, two switches that you can uh, map to whatever you want. Usually it's melee and grenade. That's what usually people put it, but depending on what you play, that's just for FPS. Um, these, your hand sits on them and you can also sort of flick them to work. Sort of, let me bring them closer here. So you can sort of flick them to work. The uh, the curvature makes it easy to press them as well. You, do, you don't really have to put a lot of force into pressing them down. You can just mildly push up like that and they press. That also took a while to get used to, but it once you did get used to it, it feels really, really nice. Uh, we have our profile lights here to show that you're uh, changing profiles or uh, DPI as you can see there. Uh, oh yeah, so there you go. So profile and DPI when you switch uh, that changes and the lights also change temporarily. Um, so <clears throat> those are the uh, those are all the buttons on the uh, mouse itself. So we got one, two, three, four, five. We have the click down, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten buttons. So ten buttons uh, in total on this mouse. Uh, in terms of rubberized feel, it's a bit towards the slippery side. It does not feel uh, too uh, grippy, but over time when your when your palm sweats after some time then it's going to start getting uh, a bit more grippy uh, which is nice so uh, more towards the slippery side bef before you start using it but if you have slightly sweaty palms it might start getting a bit more grippy but once you get used to it you especially with these buttons they're a bit grippy as well so uh kind of holds it in place i uh, have no complaints in terms of grip there just a bit slippery on the buttons no big deal uh just a bit i've seen way worse this is actually more than usable it's just a bit smooth uh but it will rough up the more you use it uh these the sides aren't uh that uh grippy either despite having that uh textured effect there not very grippy but hey Overall, it is decently grippy uh, for a claw grip. Now, I'm most mostly a claw grip user like that, but if you want to grab the whole thing like that, it also works. But for a claw grip like me, uh, it also works. I'm not. I'm partial actually. Sometimes I'm like this when I'm playing games like No Man's Sky or something. But I'm, when I'm when I'm playing Halo or Apex or something, I'm more of a claw grip. So uh, it feels really nice in the hand. No complaints in terms of feel. Um, it overall it, it feels really nice now is it as good as the logitech g502 that's for another video but um as of what it is it feels really good in the hand it feels smooth not too slippery a bit towards the slippery side but not too slippery it's more than usable uh, and it will get more uh, grippy as time passes when you use it more and you sweat a bit and uh, the the mouse gets a bit more roughed up so uh, that's basically uh, the buttons and what it feels like in the ease of use in terms of grip and stuff like that um, i also have to mention down here we have our extra sensors uh which um this is the liftoff sensor uh, or liftoff distance sensor. The two sensors over here, we'll get back to those two. We have our main sensor over here. Uh, that is, uh, of course, the main uh, optical sensor. And uh, these two are liftoff distance sensors. Now, this is not the first mouse to have liftoff distance sensors, but I think it's the first mouse to have two. I could be wrong, but I think it's the first to have two. But uh, I think the Razer Viper also had one. So what is a liftoff distance sensor? It's a sensor that makes the mouse stop tracking when you lift it off so some people just move it around like that but some people like to move the mouse like this they like to lift it off and if you don't want input while moving it from here to here that's what your lift off distance sensor does and this has two so if you're moving it at an angle this one may detect that it's on the table but this one may think may uh, detect that it's not on the table and you don't want to move it because i've seen some people slide their mouse like this 
on the table. Some people lift it. I move it on the table, but there are three types. The ones who move it on the table, the ones who slide it like that, and the ones who completely lift it off. This lift off distance sensor is for that, so that the mouse, the laser, the main laser does not track while you're moving it, because you don't want to track while moving it, because you're doing something in game or whatever that requires you not to track, but you want to move position. So uh, that is what the lift off distance sensor is for, uh, so that uh, when you're moving the mouse, it does not automatically track uh, with the uh, optical sensor, because some optical sensors will track even when they're taken off the table. Uh, so the lift off distance sensor basically disables the optical sensor while you're moving it like that. Um, so that is what the lift off distance sensor is. All right, so for a quick review of the uh, the lift off sensors. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see with the uh, dual camera angle here, uh, one is the mouse, one is the monitor of uh, my uh, older MacBook. I had to plug it to the old one because the new one has the USB-C. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's plugged to a MacBook. I get it blasphemy, blah, 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 blah. It's just, just for the test. I usually plug this to my gaming PC, uh, but this is just for this test. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the mouse left to right uh, to simulate a mouse movement and I'm going to tilt it at different angles and you'll see how uh, on the second angle there you'll see how well the sensors work and uh, stuff like that. Let me just reduce the, uh, okay there we go, let's reduce the DPI. Now I'm going to move it left to right and you'll see exactly how it works. So I'm gonna lift up, now remember there are two sensors. So lift, we're gonna drag it and we're gonna lift it. First let's lift. So let's lift it very lightly, very light lift. As you can see the mouse doesn't work. Put it back down, starts working again. Let me get more room on the cable here, okay. So now let's lift it again, as you can see. Okay, slightly dropped it near the table too much there. There is a distance that you have to lift it. If I get the exact lift value, I'll put it up here. The exact uh, distance in millimeters, but uh, that's only if I can find it. I don't think that's available online. If I do, I'll put it up there. So again, really slightly off the table, maybe a few millimeters. As you can see, it's not working. If I drop it completely, it starts working again. Let's do that again. I'm gonna use my other hand to uh, balance it out there. So there's the limit. So I may be able to measure the limit myself. So that's the limit. Um, it's about five millimeter, maybe less than five. I really can't tell. If I do measure it myself, I'll put it up on screen here. So uh, you'll see that is the limit. So now uh, let's uh, drag it across the table. Like I said earlier, some people drag, so drag it on this side. As you can see, I am dragging it, but uh, as you can see, the sensor on this side is helping uh, the mouse not work so that uh, if you're playing a game you don't want it to uh, register, uh, you can actually play without having it register and move it to another side of your mouse pad. Now let's lift up this side. Let's do that again. Not working as you can see there. Let me drop it a bit lower. Again, I'm still sliding it. I haven't lifted it. Yeah, that thing is very accurate. As you can see, it is not moving. The cursor is not moving. Okay, so that is the limit again. I'm at the limit. Let's lift it a bit up more. As you can see, it doesn't work. Now I'm lifting this side of the mouse. I'm lifting it like that. So I put my finger underneath there. So uh, yeah, that is the limit. So again, if I get the uh, measurement, I'll put it up. Now let's lift this side again, as you can see. Wait, let's do that again. As you can see, the cursor isn't moving. So yeah, that is the demonstration of the liftoff sensors on the uh, EVGA X17 um, gaming mouse. So uh, I'll try and get that value in. I'll try and measure it and I'll get that value in. If I did, it's already on screen. If I didn't, um, it's not. Now we're moving on to accuracy and uh, this is where a lot of G50 fans will get a bit mad at me because this thing killed the G502 in terms of accuracy. Now I tested this thing and like I said, we'll do a uh, review versus the G502 versus this thing in terms of accuracy. Now the DPI stuff and I showed you earlier in the software, you, you've seen that, that's okay. Um, this thing is 
more accurate than, as far as I can tell, my G502 Special Edition. So this is the Special Edition, and you must be like, oh, that thing is probably old. Replace it, get another one, compare. No, this one is just three months old. I replaced my older G502, because uh, I got this one for cheap, and the old one, why did I replace it? Oh, right, I needed it for another computer. So yeah, I put that over to a different computer, I bought this one. Uh, there is nothing wrong with my old one. It's just that uh, I, I didn't I needed it for another computer So I got this one. Uh, this one has the rubber wire So there are two versions of the G502 one has the rubber wire one has the braided wire my old one has the braided wire but uh, Yeah, the EVGA X17 is Very very sensitive when you need it to be and not sensitive when you don't want it to be sure DPI settings and stuff uh, it changes, but what I've seen in terms of movement, when the mo the the response I get from moving my hand, uh, and stuff like that, uh, it, it is just better on the X17. I ske I kept switching back and forth between the two, and I will cover that in detail in my uh, full review uh, when I compare this to that. But this is just really, really accurate. That's just how it is. It's a very accurate mouse. Um, everything I do feels responsive. I move it slightly when I'm on a relative DPI setting. I move it slightly. I want to move it a bit. It will do exactly what I uh, tell it to do. And it's kind of hard to convey that on camera here because this is a physical mouse. This is not something I can say, oh, this is not a photo review or a camera review or something. I can't convey everything to you uh, on camera here. But uh, what I can say right off the bat is that this thing is very, very accurate. And like I said, the DP, the, the quick sniper button also makes it so easy to access. I can just quick scope very easily with this. Um, and um, yeah, I, it's really, really accurate. There's no, I can't measure accuracy in terms of numbers here, but um, probably the most accurate mouse I've used. Now we can go on to the looks. Now, this mouse is definitely a looker. As you can see here, it's got this stealth design. It also comes in gray. This is the black one. I, of course, uh, went for the most stealthier look. This thing is definitely a looker. And I almost probably forgot to mention it's also slightly angled. Uh, it's not too badly angled, but it is slightly angled. And uh, this is definitely not an ambidextrous mouse. So that's kind of obvious. Slightly angled. Uh, I forgot the angle. I'll put it up here what the exact angle was, but uh, there it is. Uh, that is the angle. Let me get a G502 here for comparison. So that is... Whoop. This wire is stuck on something. Okay, so there's a G502. So uh, the G5, it's almost as, it's, I can't really tell what the angle on the two are. I'll put the, I, I showed you the EVGA's angle here before. The G502's angle I'll put up here. So uh, you know the difference. I'm using the G502 as reference because it's the golden standard for mice, uh, whether you agree or not. Um, so yeah, really stealthy design, uh, has an LED over here, has an LED over here, and two really powerful LEDs pointing that way. Like I said, this is really low brightness. The brightness uh, I mentioned earlier is really, really bright. This thing could almost be used as a torch. Uh, the front two LEDs are extremely bright, and even this. So I actually had to bring it down to 40%. This is probably less than 40 as well. This is default, it's about 30%. So yeah, that's what it uh, basically is uh, in terms of looks and stuff an angle you may be wondering why there's a lumia 925 that's a phone uh sticker that that's just one of the stickers i had from one of the phones i bought i'm just covering up the serial number there now for a quick uh rundown of the build quality mm, i've seen some comments saying that this thing is very badly built again let's bring the g502 in is it as well built as the g502 no it is not as well built as the G502. Um, the buttons also don't feel as solid as the G502. Let me bring the G502 closer so you can hear the clicks. Now let's bring the uh, X17. So 
So I don't know if you uh, can actually tell the difference uh, from sound there, but they are a bit inferior to the G502, a bit, very slightly. But the G502 feels amazing. The buttons and stuff feel amazing. Um, it's just that some people said that the, the buttons feel terrible. That's not the case. The buttons feel good on this mouse. They feel premium, but they're not as good as the G502 in terms of uh, quality overall. And uh, the build quality of this mouse, one of the main issues was people were saying the scroll wheel breaks after some time. I've been using it for three days. I don't really use the scroll wheel too much. So I really can't comment on that because um, I'm pretty sure mine's not gonna break because I never use the scroll wheel almost. I, I just use it to cycle weapons. Um, and this scroll wheel is actually good for cycling weapons because uh, it doesn't easily double scroll. Something that I had an issue on the G502 was the double scroll. Sometimes it double scrolls and then I get switched back to my uh, original weapon that I don't want to use because it's out of ammo because I'm playing uh, Halo, for example. This one, actually locks in place really nice. So the scroll wheel is definitely better than on the G502. Uh, and But people said that the quality of the scroll wheel isn't that good. I cannot comment on that for now because mine has not, I've not given me any problems. There are a few photos on Newegg showing broken scroll wheels. Um, and that was something that put me off initially when I saw this mouse for retail price around 50 to 60 dollars but when it dropped to 27 dollars i was like yeah screw that i'm getting one uh so i cannot really complain uh, comment on that because i don't really use the scroll wheel that much so uh it feels solid for now but i don't know maybe they hit it with something or they got mad they're not going to tell you that they got mad at their mouse on their uh new egg review um uh, mad at the video game or whatever but it feels solid to me i cannot really complain Overall build quality, it is a pretty good quality. Like I said, again, uh, as a whole, it's not as well built as the G502. This is EVGA's, I think, first attempt at a mouse. I don't know if they did it before. Let me know down in the comment section below, but definitely their most popular mouse, mouse of all time and easily the best-selling mouse on Newegg's website as of 2021. Uh, doesn't feel as good as the G502 uh, in terms of build quality. The, the G502 is overall built a bit better, but this is definitely a premium mouse and it feels uh, really premium uh, for what it is because there are way more horribly built mice out there. This is definitely one of the best, but not quite at the G502's level of build quality. So as a final conclusion, I'd like to say that the EVJ X17 is overall a excellent gaming mouse, especially for the price you can get it now for uh, the mere 27 to $30. Uh, honestly, you can't beat that uh, with the uh, interchange interchangeable weights and the design, uh, the, the RGB settings and uh, all that stuff for $27. You really can't get wrong there. Uh, I don't know for how long this will last at $27. It, EVJ probably wants to get it back to its original pricing uh, so that they can profit more of it. But um, yeah, for now, it's still $27 on Newegg's website as of the time of release of this video. And if you want to go get one or the wireless version of this, um, you can go pick it up. And uh, so for some pros and cons at the end, uh, for some cons, I really couldn't find any at this price range. But if we're talking with reference to its... Uh, original price range of the 50 to 60 range uh sure sometimes smaller smaller hands uh might get this uh like this part because it's a bit narrow it might be a bit uh i'm sorry larger hands for larger hands this uh, part might be a bit too narrow but apart from that personally from my personal viewpoint there's nothing really i can say as a con for the price that i paid we still have to see about uh the the scroll wheel now it's been a few more days since i did the last portion of that video i've been backed up with all my other videos as well uh so i'm recording this part i've been using this even more uh the scroll wheel does not feel like it's gonna break anytime so i really can't say that as a con despite the reviews saying that the scroll wheel is screwed up um it works perfectly for me and i use it a lot in halo to switch weapons and i've mapped it to that as well in cyberpunk but um yeah, I really can't think of any cons at this uh, price range. Uh, the software used to be a con, but now the software works fine as well and works just it, like I showed you, it works perfectly. Uh, the pros are, I mean, what's the, not there to like about this mouse? Amazing sniper button, really good buttons overall, m internal memory for profiles, uh, really solid RGB bright lighting, uh, very, very accurate with all those sensors, the extra sensors and stuff. Uh, you saw how the tilt and the, the uh, lift 
soft di distance sensor worked and all. So overall a very solid mouse for the price and even at its original price, it's a very, very solid mouse. Uh, so definitely stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button for the comparison between the uh, G502 Special Edition versus the X17. So that will be the ultimate test. And I've already figured the video out on what I wanna say and stuff. So that's coming very soon. So definitely uh, stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button down below. And honestly, if you liked this video as well, please consider hitting that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And uh, I hope this video honestly helped you with your purchasing decision. As usual, my social media is down in the description uh, below if you wanna join my social media, my Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.